welcome to you. This is Art and Leisure, a 30-minute program that focuses on the works of creative people. We celebrate creative minds here. My name is Chioma Okpara. Let's start the show by talking about an upcoming festival. You will enjoy this report, Cross My Heart. <laughs> It will be a festival of songs in different languages at the upcoming Choral Fest. Coral Fest Nigeria is being organized by the National Council for Arts and Culture and other partners. I regard the initiation of Coral Fest in partnership with their corporate sponsors as one way of improving and contributing to the festival landscape in Nigeria, as well as maximizing the economic and non-economic the staging of the event is equally designed to increase frequency of festivals and demographic access to cultural events. Undoubtedly, this event, the Coral Fest, is one way in which the National Council for Arts and Culture will continue to assist in their private sector to effectively contributing to a thriving and dynamic culture in Nigeria. The unique, rich and spectacular choral music of the different ethnic groups in the country and beyond will be on showcase. Music is universal. No people in the world are known not to have, not to have music. And of all the kinds of music we have instrumental and otherwise, singing is the most popular. A festival is a celebration of community. Yeah? Fundamentally, a festival is a celebration of community. So, the various sub communities that are going to be celebrated in the execution of this project from the youth to adults, audiences, just all cultural constituencies. We're paying particular attention to the youth, uh, and that's going to manifest in terms of the regional competitions. The name of this festival is Coral Fest Nigeria. But there is some degree of international participation. And that is in the sense that um, choirs will be encouraged to go abroad, hear and do what other people are doing, and improve on them while propagating Nigerian culture, Nigerian choral music. Also, we'll be inviting choral choirs from abroad to come into Nigeria for us to have a chance to see them. Not everybody has a chance to go out, so we can bring them in for us. So yes, there will be some uh, international participation. This press conference is to sensitize the public and the upcoming event. It's covering the entire nation, and we're going to operate on, in zones. We'll break the country into four zones. Just divide the country into four horizontal and lateral lines through the center, and have four zones, and we'll have build up competitions in each of those zones to uh, 
And that will that zonal competition thing will actually start in three months' time. The actual date will be announced in about a week's time or two weeks' time, but we are starting in three months' time. I thought I should mention that the essence of the Coral Fest, uh, which should interest all of us, is the fact that it's going to involve the youth, the youths of this country. I say to youth when I speak to them that create your own job. Once you turn five, five years old, the creative industry can make you start earning. Why you still go to school? Let's think of Michael Jackson. He started earning at the age of five. Coral Fest Nigeria will showcase a rich culture, provide jobs, and put Nigeria in a good light. It will take place in three months' time. The date will be announced by the National Council for Arts and Culture. <laughs> We love him, Papa. We love him, Papa. We love him, Papa. We love him, Papa. We love him, We love him, Papa. 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 Welcome back. I believe that Coral Fest Nigeria will be an interesting event. This is the first edition and I pray that it doesn't lack sponsorship so that it will be a yearly event. Talking about sponsorship, what kind of musical is about to be shown in London? It's so exciting because the story is about us, told by us, acted by us and shown to the world. Take a look. <laughs> Waka the musical tells the Nigerian story. The actors are intelligent young Nigerians. I'm playing Kike, Kike Johnson. She's just finished university. She's Tosin's girlfriend. And um, where everyone is doing whatever they can to help the political climate or checking out, Kike wants to shop and I play her. <laughs> I'm playing the role of Tosa. Tosa, the, um, the forward thinking boyfriend to Kike in the play. First, I'm playing the announcer in the campaign scene. I'm also one of the guys who Rex meets in London. And then, of course, I'm also the voice of conscience for Rex. So I'll be singing a song, a couple of songs, um, towards the end of the play. This stage play has been shown in Lagos. Many believe it is a good expert. I think it's a unique story. Um, it's something that a lot of um, uh, even not just Africans, a lot of people can relate to. Most of the world, uh, most of the people around the world have immigrated, whether you like it or not, from where you were born to other cities, to other places that have better opportunities. But sometimes we all recognize that maybe we're overlooking the opportunities that we had at home. There are always opportunities everywhere. So um, I think this Waka story highlights this in a very entertaining way. It's something that whether professionals or non-professionals can relate to and they would enjoy the show. It's something that we're glad that we're part of and it's something that we'll continue to support. I have seen some of the crew and the cast of Waka, the production, the choreography, the music, the talent that's on display. 
Nigeria has such a deep talent pool. Just like you are proud when the Eagles play well and they win, you need to go watch Waka and you'll be amazed at what these young people are doing. Some of the people who are acting are trained lawyers who have now decided to leave their main training to focus on theater arts. It's very impressive. And it's a world-class production and it's a story the world needs to hear. A 45-man cast and crew will travel to London. Waka the musical will be shown for five days from 21st to 25th July. Rehearsals are going on. Well, it's exciting because, um, like you're aware, it's, it's never been done in terms of moving a musical um, outside of the shores of Nigeria. So for us, it's a first, and I guess for Nigeria also, it's a first. So it's a, bit, a little bit hectic. We have a lot of work, um, from costuming to the technicals, to travel, obviously to logistics and all of that. Uh, but yeah, we're getting by. We have a lot of support from various organizations. Waka the Musical is a story that resonates with everyone. Foreigners will understand us better because we're telling our story ourselves. I think it's going to um, highlight um, the glorious and colorful aspects of our culture, um, for one thing, because uh, the play deals with um, what some of the youth have to go through in the country, and uh, there's also a lot of um, cultural references made in the play as well. So it's a showcase. I will be going there with the truth, to tell the truth, you know, speak truthfully as a character. And then secondly, I think it's a good thing for Nigeria because uh, this, you don't have Nigerians taking things like this uh, to court countries abroad often. Waka has potential to be a musical that will be taken worldwide. And going to London, if we hear that another company is willing to take us to America, to take us around Europe, take us to the Far East, that would be the most exciting thing that could absolutely ever happen to us because it has that potential. We want to sell Nigeria as something greater than what the world sees because there's so much talent in Nigeria. There's so much joy, there's so much to share our culture, our understanding of things, our traditions, all of that. The world needs to see us in a different light than what they know us to be. And that is what we want to share. We're desperate for it. So we're super excited about London. We're coming to hit the town and hopefully we take it to other countries in the world. That would be amazing. This is the first time in Nigerian musical audition abroad. Things are looking up for the art sector, you may say. We do support arts, we do support industries that we see value, we do support initiatives that we see value whereby they're actually exporting something. There's, it's, there's a genuine initiative, there's a new idea. For us, um, it's a quality production. We've seen it here before. We, de uh, we de um, develop quality homes. So it's a, for us, it's a win-win whereby you have the partners that, that actually have the same central themes and the central objectives of producing things in quality. Um, if we do find other opportunities like this that gives um, Nigeria the opportunity to export uh, what we have outside Nigeria to target Nigerians and the whole world actually um, outside Nigeria will we'll, we'll gladly support it. We're changing the story of Africa in the world. Africa is more than wars and poor governance and bad roads and famine and underemployment and all that. Africa is about talent. Africa is about quality. Africa is about family. Africa is about doing the right things. Waka the musical has become a non-oil expert which will fetch the country huge revenue and good publicity. Good to have you back. Waka the musical is going to London. Uzama Samuel Anyamu just came back from China. He is a photographer. He visited so many places in China and came back with interesting pictures. He titled this whole exhibition, Coming to China. 
Watch this. Uzoma Samuel Anyangu studied painting at the Department of Fine Art and Design, University of Port Harcourt. He graduated in 2012. He veered into photography afterwards. He spent one year in China on a residency program. Whilst there, he visited many tourist sites. I visited so many historical sites, like that of the ancient uh, Temple of Heaven and the Great Wall of China, which is among the seven wonders of the world. Of the many historical Chinese sites I visited, one exceptional one is that of uh, the Qin Dynasty from the first emperor of China. Being at those sites, especially this one of the Qin Dynasty, we often blow your mind as a woman seeing these sculptures and so uh, the, 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 the display, you know, taking us back to the ancient history of the Chinese and civilization. So as an African, uh, somehow I haven't seen this, uh, this type of uh, massive sculptures displayed or on earthed. You know, we have the North Terracotta sculptures, but those ones are not as massive as this one. So um, the Chinese people somehow surprised me because in Nigeria here, we often take them for granted. I would say that some of them, uh, we, 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 we take them as just maybe businessmen or Chinese uh, business country, just go buy some wares and all that. But they have what will blow your mind when you actually go there. And that is why I brought some of these things back for us to see how we can you know, learn from them in cultural or heritage management. He did extensive research on China's history. These terracotta sculptures speak of China's epic tradition. Here, this is um, one of the terracotta warriors, uh, not just one of them. This is a high rank officer that was uh, discovered or unearthed in the pit tray. Where we have a pit one, pit two, and pit three. This one was unearthed in pit three, and this warrior or the general actually belongs to the pit, uh, and they, they call that pit the command center of the entire terracotta warriors. His lens zoomed into other great moments of people and places in China. This series uh, called the Clash of Powers. And this particular one is titled Red Moon Down. It tells the advancement of the Chinese from the traditional or ancient uh, life to the contemporary life. This piece is actually a portrait of the Chinese past president or leader by name, Chairman Mao Zedong. The man is very iconic. You cannot bypass him when you go to China or in Beijing because He's like a god, he's a very special icon to them, like we have our Nelson Mandela and some other prominent leaders in Nigeria. Capital of a province in China called Guangdong province. This is where many Africans reside. This is also the business hub of the Chinese. Chinese people resident in Nigeria are happy that their cultural heritage is being celebrated here. And will bring the power of creation. And creation will bring the power of production. And production will bring the convenience of human beings. So start from the ants, so we will get what, what our human beings convenient life. And if it feedback us the more comfortable, more bright life. I'm very excited and I'm very happy. That's why I'm here. Because I just want to have a look to see what they are doing, what they can do. And I see that so many pictures that they took themselves. That is actually is part of our work. So I'm so happy that I hope more and more Nigerian people can come to China to have a look themselves to see what we have, what we have got left from our ancestors. Many who came to see the exhibition believe there's a lot the nation can learn from Osama's research. This um, project 
awakens us to the need for us to take our culture seriously and to see our civilization from the evolution of our own culture and not the culture of other people. The Nok culture, which is the oldest civilization in Nigeria, is older than the terracotta sculptures of the Shin dynasty. Then we have everything to begin to compare notes, to see where we went wrong, that we have not gotten this far. A lot of Nigerian art is ethnographic art. I made comments on um, the need to look beyond ethnographic art as merely history or historical artifacts. Nigeria hosts one of the largest heritage sites in Africa and therefore in the world. You know, so what we should be doing actually, which we know we should do as Nigerians, is to give a befitting environment to our heritage sites and whatever we have excavated from archaeological sites, we should know to keep them holy, respected, and properly conserved and preserved and displayed. Uzoma Nyamu's career is on a good footing because he has good mentors. Uzoma is a special young man, talented and gifted, and somebody who has a measure of respect and regard for excellence. He did his IT with me in my studio. Then he was in Uniport and um, immediately I saw that this guy was extremely talented. This is Uzoma's first solo exhibition in the country and he made strong statements with his art pieces. This has been a long time dream, not just today. This is a project, whether from the Chinese part or any other part of the world. I think uh, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep on rolling it making it better, looking elsewhere, even from the Nigerian side, we're going to do some things, taking it to other part of the world to also showcase that this is what we have. Uzama Samuel Anyamu says, photography gives him the opportunity to say much. More grist your rebel, Uzama Samuel Anyamu. I hope we gave you value for the time you spent with us today. Thank you so much for being there. By God's grace, this program returns in seven days' time. God willing. Please, from time to time, visit our website www.artandleisure.com.ng. Always leave a comment after watching each episode. My name is Chioma Okwara. Love yourself. Love Nigeria. Thank you.